Okay, so this is the um, a preview lecture for OCHEM 1, Lesson 2. And there are five objectives in this lesson, and they're, they're still just Gen Chem. So all of Chapter 1 and all of Chapter 2 is just general chemistry principles. So the first objective I touched on in the last video a little bit is describe the hybridization given... Oh, I don't know. Just a second here. Describe the hybridization and how it leads to double, single, and triple bonds. Objective number two is describe how orbital overlap produces different bond lengths and strengths. Objective three is describe the bond angles around sp3 hybridized atoms, sp2, and, and sp hybridized atoms. Objective four is given a molecular formula, predict these four things. Lewis dot structure, or the calculate structure. Hybridization, bond angles about a particular atoms, about, uh, I'm sorry, the hybridization of all atoms bond angles about particular atoms, and molecular geometry about a particular atom. And objective five is, given a Lewis structure, predict whether or not the structure the uh, structure will have a dipole moment. Okay, so uh, we're going to describe hybridization just a little bit. I've got a pre-drawn picture here. You may recall from uh, Gen Chem that uh, the carbon, just a carbon atom as an example, the, the electronic configuration for a carbon atom is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, uh, sorry, no, 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 2p2, okay, 2p2, that's the electronic configuration of it, and we, you may recall that this is the first shell, and here's the second shell, here's a subshell, an S, and it has a shape, here's another subshell, and it has a shape, there's another subshell, and it, it has a shape, you remember the subshell, S shape, it's spherical, right? So if we're trying to draw a carbon atom and all the electrons in those, we might draw a sphere for 1s, and then 2s is another sphere, which is further out, and then 2p is dumbbell-shaped, which I've started to draw up here, right? So there's pz, right? It's got a plus lobe and a minus lobe. I've, I stretch them out. Generally, the book's going to draw it maybe in a more like bulbous shape, okay? I stretch them out as an old habit, I guess, and partly to help me see where things are pointing. All right, so let's forget that for now. Let's go back to this picture up here. I've drawn the, all the P orbitals of the P subshell of a carbon atom. But then we, we uh, re recall that it hybridizes, right? And when it hybridizes, it goes from 2s, 2p, right, to four identical orbitals, okay? And they go in somewhat of a uh, tetrahedral shape. Well, not somewhat of a, exactly a tetrahedral shape. By the way, I'm only drawing one lobe of this sp3 hybridized orbital. The other lobe is back here, and it turns out it's a, you know it's a smaller lobe, and the bonding uh, usually goes here. So this is the carbon atom as it's hybridized. Let's talk about a carbon atom though if it's hybridized as an sp2 hybridized. What would happen would be Two of them would come over here with uh, an S. Two of, the, two of these orbitals would hybridize to make a molecular orbital. These would be sp2 orbitals, right? And that would leave one unhybridized p orbital. So let's draw that. If we have one unhybridized p orbital, let's say it's the p sub z. It doesn't really matter which one it is, of course. Then uh, we would have three then identical orbitals that are around the around the perimeter of this, or the equator of this. So this is an sp2 hybridized orbital. This is an sp2 hybridized orbital. This is an sp2 hybridized orbital. And here is an unhybridized p orbital. All right? And so if we have, if we ever want to make double bonds, you, you recall from, from uh, Gen Chem that double bond is going to come from an overlap of a sigma bond. So let's, let's, let's just do C, two carbons next to each other that are both sp2 hybridized, okay? It's going to go side to side overlap, right? And there is the overlap of the end to end overlap. This is the sigma bond, which is right there. And this is the top lobe of the pi bond, and there's the bottom lobe of the pi bond. Can you see why students, when they look at that, are sometimes tempted to say that that's a triple bond? Let me ask you a question which uh, now, uh, which, which may come up in, in the first day of class. Why is this not a triple bond? This is a double bond, and why is that? Okay. 
why is this a double bond? Okay, and we'll talk about that in first day of class. That's objective number one. Objective number two is describe how orbital overlap produces different bond lengths. All right, so let me let me talk about that briefly. I'm not going to do as well as the as the book does, but in case it's I don't know, in case it's helpful to, to hear someone say it, let's look at it like this. Suppose you have an sp um, What's the hybridization of that carbon right there? And what's the hybridization of that carbon? This is sp, and this is sp2. I know because this only has two electron groups around it, and since it only has two electron groups, it's only got two or two uh, atomic orbitals that made up those molecular orbitals, so it's sp. And these. This has three electron groups around it, and so it's sp2. Okay, now the, the, the trick for objective number two is to describe this particular bond here, and then we're going to compare it to that bond. This bond is made up of a carbon, sp2 hybridized orbital, and one hydrogen s orbital. Or, not sp2, sorry. sp uh, orbital and one hydrogen s orbital. This is made up of a carbon sp2 hybridized orbital and a hydrogen s orbital. Okay, star, star, double dagger, double dagger, okay? Now, what's that mean about these bonds? That means this bond's going to be shorter because it has more S character, right? This one's 50% S, that's 100% S. This is 33% S, that's 100% S. So this bond is more S character, more S character, and therefore, it's shorter and stronger. The book has a nice explanation of why that makes a stronger bond. Let me not get into that right now. Okay? That's a, just, t just touching on objective number two. Objective number three, describe bond angles around sp3 hybridized atoms, sp2 and sp. And I'm just going to take you back to Vesper. Bond angles and uh, V S E P R is what you want to look up for that. I mean, I can tell you, but it's going to be, you're going to be better off looking it up. SP3 is going to have bond angles that are hybridization angles about 109.5, SP2 120, SP 180. Okay, and we really spent a lot of time in Gen Chem talking about why that is. So let me not go into that right now, it's any more than that. Okay, given a molecular formula, predict the Lewis dot structure, which we've done, uh, hybridization, which we've touched on, bond angles and molecular geometry. Let me not do that right now. This is the big deliverable for this lesson, though, right? Because this sort of sums up all the things we did in, in the prior, prior, uh, um, in the prior objectives. And then finally, given the Lewis structure, predict the dipole moment. I think I'm going to leave that for class. Um, actually, you know, you can you can do that without me. I think it's section 1.16 in Bruce. Uh, and it's, it, in my opinion, it's much better to get that uh, via the textbook than from a lecture anyway. Okay. Good luck.